this chit chat, this sit down, where you guys can kind of just get a little bit more into my mind frame and what I do and how it works. So for me, um, you know, February is Black History Month and I am always trying to do something for Black History Month. This month was a lot in a great way. So first, um, Thursday was just all about service. So I first started out um, at Thornwood High School, which is a neighboring high school. So I went to TF South, also known as Thornton Fractional South in Lansing. Thornwood High School is in South Holland, um, and so it's literally the next town over. And I um, was able to talk to them on a Greek panel. So I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And my ship, Felicia, she invited me to come and talk to them. And so we talked about, you know, Greek life. We talked about, for me, I talked about being able to pledge in grad chapter um, and some of the benefits of it and what they can look for. Because a lot of these students, they are first gen or they're going to school, but their parents aren't Greek affiliated. So you just, you don't know what you don't know. And a lot of times, you know, it's just great to talk to them. So I had a blast. We talked to four different periods. So a lot of different kids. They had a lot of different questions and it was fun. After that, they fed us and it was just good networking too. So I loved it. And that was what I did like during the, the afternoon. And then at night, at night was so much fun. So at night, I was able to volunteer at Calvin Christian School. So for those that don't know, that is my alma mater for kindergarten. Well, not kindergarten. Yeah, kindergarten to eighth grade. Yes, I went to a private Christian school um, in South Holland from kindergarten to eighth grade. And when I tell you the school has changed so much for the better, they have daddy-daughter dances now. Um, and this was their first ever Black History Month program. So their program is called Black Excellence and it was amazing, like uh, amazing. Um, so if you go to my Instagram, um, at Danny So Fancy, I'll put it below, um, you can see the video um, of what I worked with, but basically we did like a little step show um, and we had each member like represent a member of the Divine Nine as well and it was fantastic. And for me, like I'm so happy that I'm able to give back, but it also made me a little sad because when I was there, I was like one of six um, black students. And so I personally don't really communicate outside of Facebook with um, majority of my classmates. Some of them, you know, have racist backgrounds. And so there's just something that we just can't kind of continue. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just different. And it's, it's very shocking, I feel, because we were so close when we were younger and spent so much time, but then you just gotta remember like, these people were your friend because of the proximity of where you were at when you were there. And now it's just like, so different. The parents love it, it's more of a family, and it's just, you can see how it's progressed. And I'm super excited to be with it. And honestly, this is also like why people want to volunteer. I feel like every volunteer aspect doesn't just end with like, I don't know, n nothing. Um, my volunteering, which I was asked, right? So this is just the power of networking. One, I was asked because one of my friends that I do still contact with, that I went to school with, her mom now works there and they were like, hey, we're looking for I'm a mater to participate. We know that you're always down to like be volunteering and doing stuff and I am, I'm always down. Would you be open? I was like, absolutely. And then from there, this lady who I'm a part of this organization called Yeoman's Professional League 40 Under 40, 
she recommended me for another thing within the school that is paid. And so now it's like a whole thing. And that is how networking happens, but this is what happened in the month of February for me. So one, love it. Two, it was so great. And that's kind of where I spent my, um, the rest of my black history kind of phased out giving service. And I had a blast. Um, so now let's go ahead and dive into one of the things that I love to talk about. And that's gonna be Big Bella Brands and kind of the way the episode ended. So let's talk about it. Cause I know y'all are probably like, what? And that's kind of how I am as well. So it ended with LeVar Ball really pushing the limits of how he's going to treat his child, his youngest son, um, when it comes to this big baller brand. I really think that there should be a pivot. I, I do, I just think there should be a pivot. I think that the shoe kind of deal needs to be off the table so that your kid can go and get a shoe deal and then he can also have this clothing line. Because you can change the clothing line into like watches, you can go into like duffel bags, you can go into like suitcases, you can kind of pivot this clothing line. Because right now, the clothing looks, in my opinion, subpar. For all this investment that you're doing, the fact that you just have some t-shirts, I need a little bit better, right? Like I'm thinking that you're gonna have compression socks, that you're going to have um, pants, um, more like Adidas, like Adidas, like Beyonce's Ivy Park is killing it compared to what Big Baller brand has going on for a relaunch. And I personally love the branding of the original more than this new stuff. Um, I think that it makes sense for Jello to have his own line because Jello was on the practice squad of OKC Blue, which means that he has not played yet. I don't know what the practice squad looks like. Um, I think that he's been playing and then now he's good for the summer league. So we'll see what happens with that. So I think that he's where he needs to be. But I think that we have a really, really, really big opportunity with LaMelo to make a lot of money um, and to be drafted one of the top draft picks. So we'll see what that looks like. We'll see where that goes. But I think that for the father to really incline, like we're gonna have some issues if you don't support this brand, you can't force somebody to do something, especially when the brand has been tainted based off, your, off of your own decisions. It'd be one thing if like everybody was around and able to make certain decisions, but you made decisions by yourself without consulting the family that led to the issues within Allen, and now you are forcing someone to still be a part of something even though they don't have full kind of say so in what goes on behind the scenes. He's saying, oh, you have it for like your line and stuff, but for me, had it really been like the family making certain decisions. It wouldn't have gotten to this point because there would have never been no like secrecy or things that people didn't know. And like just being open with like your financials and stuff, it, it just wasn't open. You know what I mean? Like I'm a part of like organizations and like everybody sees at the business meeting what the financials are who has been paid what, what vendor has been paid what, how much money is in taken, like that is basically open to everybody as long as you are a um, paid member, you can vote on it. But even if your dues have kind of collapsed, sometimes you can still even see it. So, 
for me like there's just not so much transparency as you would want for something that is quote unquote your brand so i think that threatening to not be your father anymore or having the relationship be totally different is like not okay it's not especially like you're basically making me choose what i want to do or my career or my bag over that and that's bs period so now let's go into um <laughs> Now let's go into Love is Blind. Love is Blind, I binge watched that show in one day. Let's talk about <laughs> the people. So let's talk about from bad, from worse to good, right? From bad to, to, to great. <sighs> Jessica. Jessica is when I saw her, I was scared. And I was like, I don't ever wanna be her. I don't ever wanna be her to the point where one, I'm throwing myself at a man who has made his choice and it's not you. That was out of control. Two, I never wanna be a person that Knows she doesn't want a man and can't make it work, but leads him on for the sake of not having anybody. Like she should have left, she should have never left Mexico with him. Mark, his inability to see the red flags is scary. And again, I never want to be a mark either. Where someone's saying you're second place. Or someone's, she's basically not attracted to him. And that is the main thing. And she tried to make it that it was about age. But in reality, it was just about attractiveness. And so she saw what she almost had, which was Bennett, and was like, I'm settling. And in reality, she didn't almost have him because as she was growing a bond with Bennett, Bennett was growing a bond, a bond with Amber as well. So like, that's not the case. And then he ended up marrying her and they're still together now. So it's like, baby, that wasn't ever going to be you. And I get it. You guys had a special moment, but it wasn't enough for him to choose you. And so, I just never want to be in a situation where I am like that. I think that her feeding her dog wine and then drinking after her was crazy. Um, and, and the fact that not enough people are talking about that, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand, but whatever. And I think that um, Kelly is just as messy as Jessica. She's just boring, so people are missing it. But for her to go all the way down the aisle and say no to Kenny, because again, she wasn't attracted to him. She was saying, oh, I normally date people that are brunette and he's blonde. Not just that you don't like him, period. But yeah, Kelly is just as bad as Jessica, but because they're boring, um, Kelly and Kenny were boring on the show, um, people just don't care enough, um, and it's just not as most, it wasn't as overt. <laughs> but Kelly didn't want Kenny. She didn't want him because he is not attracted to, to her. She was like, oh, I want somebody with, um, you know, brunette hair and not blonde. Girl, you should have never left Mexico. And you could tell who didn't want the other person because they weren't intimate. Period. So like you could tell who just really it wasn't gonna work at all. 
based off of like a physical attraction. Like I can't bring myself to kind of dive deep and like work on other issues and like figure out a life with you if I can't be physically intimate with you and I don't want to connect with you on that level. So yeah, there's that. And that also goes to show like the physical attraction does matter. Like the people that actually made it, they connected mentally first. But they were also attractive people. Amber and Bennett are both attractive people. Lauren and Cameron are both attractive people. And that's that. And they didn't really have a lot of bickering and like arguing either. So like mentally they were together. Physically they were together. Jessica... You just didn't find who you were looking for or what you were looking for on that show. And Jessica scared me because she's 34, still like playing these games. Kelly too, Kelly's 33, still playing these games. But it's like, and this is before the show came out. That's why I was like, you know, you know what you want. I never want to be in a situation where I'm like, do I still not know? Do I want him? Do I not want him? Like, you should, should know that you know that you know what you want. And so for me, that's why my dating, the no's have been a lot easier because I'm like, I don't want him. Mm -mm. And I'm okay with my decision because I know that I know what I know. And I know what I want and I know what I don't want. So let's talk um, Cameron and Lauren. So I think that Lauren is perfect. I love Lauren. Thank you for representing the good black girls thank you lauren lauren has her own business lauren comes from a nice family lauren is sweet lauren has a great personality lauren is accomplished we love lauren cameron people are like he's giving me creep vibes i don't think cameron gives me creep vibes cameron is a little bit of a nerd and he's excited that he got someone that was above his level look wise and was scared that she was gonna leave him so he was like is this real is this mine blah 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 and cameron probably also saw jessica trying to ease up on bennett and was like i don't need anybody else trying to ease up on lauren just saying because it seemed like it was very obvious at least with the filming. I don't know what the people saw in real life. But it was obvious that Jessica was pushing up on Bennett. So I think that he saw that. I think that, you know, once things calm down, I think that he's kind of mellowed out like, this is my wife. She's not going anywhere. She actually likes me. She chose me. She's, she's staying with me. Everything's going to be okay. I mean that he kind of relaxed, but I think that his feelings are genuine. I think he's a great guy, and I think that he's one of those people that were just open and ready for love. You know how some people are just ready, and you don't have to like make somebody better. They just are already there and ready. That's what Cameron was. He was ready, um, and you can even tell that he was ready based off of the type of. Uh, questions he was asking from the beginning. He was ready. So Amber and Bennett, I think that um, for me, I was a little surprised that they went through with it because of Amber's um, financial slash, she just kind of seemed all over the place. But then I really wasn't because I feel like their connection was genuine. Think that he had enough and honestly her debt was twenty thousand. i mean that's not that much money it really isn't like i'm not it's not that much money um i'm sure that now that they are influencers uh the money is coming in a little bit faster and better um and i think that bennett may not have been that much better so I think that he was like, you know what? Once he saw her family, he was like, 
I'm freaking out over not much. I'm gonna just kind of roll with it because I really enjoy her and ha like her around and stuff. So I'm I'm into it. I'm into it. Um, for Damien, when I saw Giannina, I was like, you know, there are ways to discuss an issue. And I don't think telling somebody on national TV that their sex life sucks or isn't that great um, is what should have happened. Um, you know, that's for maybe at night when the camera crew is away or whatever, but now when everything's rolling, I think that was, that was a lot. And for me, I think that what I've learned is that even if you're not 100% sure about something or someone, until you're 100% sure that you're not, I don't think that it is best to kind of verbally say that one day and then change the next and then up and down. I think that's just something that we can just all learn. And I don't mean that for just Jessica knew she and I won't mark from Mexico. So she knew she didn't want him and should have been whatever. And the fact that she was so happy walking down that aisle just to break her heart, break his heart, that just is weird to me. <laughs> like that was the happiest she had ever been. And she was going to tell him that she didn't want him anyway. So I'm like, what is going on? But for Giannina, she actually wanted to be with him and chose him at the end. And it was like, girl, he probably didn't know you was going to say yes until you actually say yes. And that is concerning. He shouldn't have put it all on her. Like, again, I think that he probably should have voiced all this before. I was really kind of concerned or pointed out that they only asked, the only woman that was asked first in the wedding party was Lauren and not Cameron. Everybody else, the woman was asked first and then the man was asked. But with Lauren, the man was asked first and then Lauren. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how that works. Why? Anyway. I'm gonna end this chit chat here, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys my opinion on just kind of anything that was happening this week. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.